good, good morning uh, to everyone again. And uh, thank you so much, Councilman McDowell, Councilman Duvall, Councilman Davis. Uh, thank y'all so much for all the support and uh, guidance that we received uh, on this uh, recommendation. Uh, really, um, you know, we discussed in our uh, previous meeting uh, that we were gonna have Dr. Donaldson as well as Robin to evaluate uh, the names that they had, they had initially recommended to us and potentially evaluate those, uh, scale those down and provide some recommendations for you all to review and assess in preparation for you all taking it back to the full council. So really, I wanna turn this over to Dr. Donaldson and Robin to, to, to get us started. So Dr. Donaldson, I don't know who, whether you want you or Robin to, to get us started. Well, good, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for the opportunity. Um, Reverend McDowell, you, you, yeah. you remember that famous conversation between Elisha and Elijah? Oh. And um, After, <laughs> you, you know that conversation? And, and at one point, Elijah tells Elisha, you ask me a hard thing. And I feel <laughs> in some ways that might be an appropriate scripture lesson this morning. Uh, we've been asked to do a hard thing as relates to to recognizing individuals and trying to think of creative ways to um, acknowledge and, and document our history. And so as part of Robin and I have done a lot of deliberating and there are so many worth, worthy individuals that we could talk about and we will talk about today, um, but we're still of the mind that a, perhaps a creative way to include as many persons as possible is to develop a, a general name for a park that mm -hmm. will be very intentional in having multiple histories represented and reflected in the park. And I want to, before I talk about what I have, and Rob and I think is a, is a good suggestion, and certainly willing to entertain thoughts and, and even push back on it. Um, I want to read a letter that was sent to me well before Bull Street Park was ever thought about. Uh, it's a letter written by a woman named Freddie Johnson, who is a who is a um, a former resident of the Book of Washington Heights community. Uh, she is the great great granddaughter of a man named Hillard Bell, who we had discussed in one of our earlier meetings. Mr. Bell was born during the period of Reconstruction, and he was a laborer and a cook on state in the state hospital property, and he raised his family there. So Mrs. Johnson wrote me this maybe two years ago. She said, when the stadium was being built, city officials did a media campaign asking the citizens to write a letter giving suggestions for a name for the new stadium. My mom had me to write a letter on her behalf. I wrote to Mayor Benjamin and city council. The suggestion from her mother was that we name the Firefly Stadium, the People Stadium. She said, first, for all the Columbia citizens who will pay for it, also in honoring um, of the hospital staff and for the medical team and other supporting employees who care for the patients and for the patients who lived and died on that property and even for the state prisoners who were buried near the site. My mom even had a vision that her grandfather would have a bronze sculpture, sculpture erected on the premises in his honor. My mom said with a sigh, I am the last person living who knows this history. Mama said, there's something about history. It gets lost if we don't talk about it and things like that matter. So inspired by Ms. Freddie Johnson's mother, Rob and I were of the mind that perhaps an appropriate name would be just that, Citizens Park. It is responding to a citizen writing this letter years ago, but it also reflects something else. An important civil rights group in this city was a group called the Richland County Citizens Committee. It's not widely known now, but it was established in the mid 1950s by people like Majeska Monteith Simpkins, Mr. A.P. Williams Jr. and people like Mr. Oliver Washington who was a deacon at the Zion Baptist Church. Uh, this group uh, was uh, a staunch civil rights organization and they actually achieved multiple victories. But two things I wanna underscore uh, this morning. One thing they called for was improved mental health facilities and resources for African-Americans. 
they challenged racial segregation in mental health facilities. Uh, in the mid 1960s, Majeska Simpkins and other people like Miss Beatrice McKnight and others actually engineered a, pro a, te a television conference on the Bull Street property where they walked the mayor and they walked the governor through these properties to acknowledge the un un poor conditions, the poor conditions of these facilities. And then they went further out Farrell Road as well. The other thing they did in the mid 60s as Columbia was being seeking an all American city status, they very much said there is a real um, dark spot or sort of black, black eye in the city. They said that the parks, city parks for African Americans are clearly unequal to those of the white facilities. So they pushed for greater uh, improvements and investment in parks in African American neighborhoods. Now, that last piece, I never knew. In fact, I never knew it until we were given this task to look at this history. So here we have a civil rights organization founded by prominent people in the city who advocated for improved mental health facilities and better parks for all citizens. So you asked of us a hard thing. Uh, I, I don't know any, anything that has been as challenging as this, but to have these pieces come together, a group founded by prominent people who engage in improving facilities for all citizens, and to have this letter coming from Freddie Johnson that was not even associated with this campaign has pushed me in, in this direction. Now, we say all this in part because we recognize there's a lot of excitement about a name, a specific name. And so recognizing that, Robin and I have also looked very closely at that list. And, and if we do not move in a, in a direction of a citizen's part, there are some other very strong uh, alternatives as well. So I'll turn that over to Robin. So we, um, thank you, thank you, Bobby, as always, encapsulates beautifully and eloquently. Um, as, as we presented a, a, a few months ago, we compiled a, a list of individuals who um, certainly could be considered. Um, what, what I wanted to do is just walk through that list again so that you could see if we were to do something like a citizen's park um, that would in, include potentially a series of wayside signs, much like what has been done by Columbia SC 63 on Main Street, uh, as well as in, in our outdoor museum at the Man Simon site. Um, if we could kind of think about that as a, as a type of experience that people who visit that park, not just for recreation, but also to get a, a really in-depth picture of the Black experience specifically, um, within the Department of Mental Health broadly, but also on that campus. So I think Erica said I could show my screen. So, so just in terms of for, for some context, you can um, see down here at the bottom of this, this early map of, of Columbia, this is the Bull Street campus. This is the Babcock building and the Robert Mills Lunatic Asylum. So this would have been Bull Street and Calhoun Street. You can see just north of the campus, the Wallace Estate. So this was a, a, a plantation um, by w, owned by W.H. Wallace, who in addition to owning this land, owned humans. And one of the prominent families that emerged from the Wallace Plantation, again, on this site was the Thompson family. And Clarissa and her husband, Samuel, were, were enslaved on this plantation. And there are individuals from their family specifically who have connections to the Bull Street campus beyond uh, their familial roots to that place physically. Um, and you can see kind of outlined here, uh, Samuel Benjamin Thompson, was one of four delegates elected to the 1868 Constitutional Convention, served in the House of Representatives, and he also served on the Board of Regents for the State Asylum in 1873. Um, another of the, of the Thompson children, E.B. Thompson, was a steward at the asylum during much of the Reconstruction era. Uh, Caroline Thompson Alston, uh, you may know from the, the store that is on Gervais Street that uh, Jennifer Clyburn just recently acquired. 
um, is also a member of that family. And then the daughter of Samuel Thompson, Carissa Thompson Allen, is uh, or was during Reconstruction one of the uh, a key literary figure who wrote about about Columbia. So this is a family that has very deep kind of roots to that site specifically in a variety of ways, um, and would be a way that we could really begin. I think if we're looking even from 1810 as a start period for telling a story of the experience on the site, um, this would be a starting point for us. Alonzo McLean is another individual who we have mentioned. He was likely also um, owned by the, the Wallace family, is connected to the Thompson family as part of the, the Wallace estate. Um, so it's likely that he also spent part of his youth on the grounds of the asylum. He did attend Benedict Institute in Columbia, um, is, is best known for his um, integration of the Naval Academy in, in 1873. Um, Paige Ellington, we've talked to, at length about, and I think, you know, Dr. Donaldson and I, when we're looking at potential individuals to name for the park, if if this committee and council ultimately doesn't doesn't decide to to go forward with a, with the citizens park, uh, Paige Ellington certainly is one of our top recommendations for an individual, um, really integral in the in the construction and kind of. Um, the physical footprint of, of the Bull Street campus, but also very involved in, in Columbia in a variety of ways through, through his church, um, through leadership uh, as, a, as an elected official, um, and also in the Arsenal Hill neighborhood. You know, he wasn't trained as an architect, but certainly is credited with um, designing many of the buildings on, on the campus, as well as the, the original and aspire at, at First Presbyterian Church, which was not there today, but um, is credited with, with a lot of key um, structures in that campus on the campus. A William Nash, also a Reconstruction era legislator, um, was on the Board of Regents for the asylum. Again, um, has a connection to the site, but also has a long and, and storied history in, in Columbia for a variety of, of key initiatives. Uh, J.D. Harris was the assistant physician at the asylum. It was a, it was a relatively short-lived stay at, um, on, on the campus, but it was a really key appointment of, uh, of a black physician to the site. And, and also the story of, of why and how it was so short lived is, is certainly important for uh, the story again of, of black professional experience in Columbia and, and on the campus. Uh, Benjamin Campbell, we don't know a lot about Campbell. We do know that he was a, a gardener as you can see um, from the city directory here. He was a gardener at the asylum. Um, he was uh, born in slaves on the streets. Um, definitely has a connection to the site as well. We've talked about this as an opportunity. There was quite a robust hortotherapy program at uh, on the Bull Street campus. And there's an opportunity to kind of talk about grounds, talk about the the that aspect of the park as well, using Ben Campbell as, a, um, as an entry point to that story. And then just kind of broadly, um, the, the work that Dr. Donaldson and his team has, have put together for some of our 20th century luminaries, again, with, with, with connections to the campus. And, and I've just listed the, the direct connections here, um, but we have a, a secondary document with much um, more complete um, biographical information that we can forward along, but just in terms of looking at some of the some of our well-known champions for civil rights and social justice, I.S. Levy, who was the undertaker for the state hospital, and and Dr. Donaldson understand that that I.S. Uh, Levy Johnson has some stories about how that occurred. Um, James Hinton was a chaplain at, at Crafts Pharaoh, and and C.J. Whitaker began working for um, the state hospital early in his career and, and certainly spent 40 years um, there as well. And, and I think when we look at these individuals, we're talking 
about the Bull Street campus, but also when we look at, at sites like Morse Village and, and Crafts Fair, we're able to expand the footprint of the impact of, of the department beyond just the Bull Street campus. Uh, Dr. Donaldson mentioned um, Majestica Simpkins and the Richland County Citizens Committee. This is some of that content from her transition, the establishment um, from, the, from the SENA ACP, the establishment of the Richland County Citizens um, Commission, and some information about this really championing the, the cause of um, the conditions at the asylum campus. And I think you know, this, this story really does represent um, an, an advocacy around care at the campus that I think carries through today that an organization like ABLE SC would be well equipped to help to, to um, elaborate on, on that story if we're looking for additional partners down there. And that's just in terms of some of the folks that Dr. Donaldson um, has identified as you know, our, our citizens of, of impact. Um, Hilliard Bell, who um, was, was mentioned initially as an inspiration for, for the naming here. Uh, Dr. John Bull, who was the first African-American member of the board of the Mental Health Commission and, and had a, a long career in that position. And then, and then Dr. Harry Wright, who was one of the individuals who founded the African-American Studies Program at the University of South Carolina, um, but also has very significant ties to mental health and specifically um, the, the Hall Institute, which is part of. So kind of those, I, I think we would, we would identify as some of the individuals, again, if we're looking at creating a sort of history trail within that park system, um, these are examples, I think, of, of individuals who we would like to see included in that, but it certainly doesn't, I think, um, provide a complete list if we continue to, to dig into this. I think there are lots of stories that we could, we could tell. Um, you know, one of the benefits also of having this as a broad name that um, encompasses a, 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 lot of, a lot of stories of individuals and, and groups is that we have the capacity to, to continue to build on that so that if, uh, you know, if a year from now uh, another story comes to light or somebody who we, we didn't initially recognize as part of this project, you could add another sign along the way. There may also be something that's web-based that could be linked to um, the park itself that would provide additional um, information. So I'm going to turn back over to, to Dr. Donaldson to, to sort of share some of the, the, the two groups that we think, if you are not interested in this direction, that we would recommend as individual names. So um, before the Citizens Committee came to our attention, uh, this, Paige Ellington, I just want you to look for a moment uh, at uh, this man. Mm -hmm. um, this man helped to build parts of the Bull Street property. He was also a very prominent um, in citizen and uh, political figure in his own right, in addition to being um, a, a worker on the property. Uh, it's an intriguing story. Um, uh, he is certainly worthy of recognition and um, further acknowledgement. Uh, and so if there is real driver push to, to have a distinct individual uh, who is um, who could be memorialized on this site, um, you can't find a, a better person than someone who, who actually helped to build a part of the Bull Street property. Uh, and also ironically, one of the oldest homes still standing in the Arsenal Hill area on Blanding Street is actually the home of Paige Ellington. Um, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it may have actually been built by him as well. Um, so he's, he's certainly someone that I would encourage deep and further consideration. And, and Robin, the second, the next slide, if, if there is one more, is this one. So Clarissa Thompson, featured here, is buried at Randolph Cemetery. Uh, people drive past uh, Randolph all the time, going out um, 126, not knowing that in that cemetery are some of the people who helped to build our city, uh, including the Thompson family. They're all buried there. Um, Caroline Alston was an early prominent African-American owner of a store on Gervais Street. Uh, her, her, her relatives were reconstruction figures. And so within this one family, you have so many different angles that could be explored on a park um, beyond the, the clear important piece that 
Not only were these prominent people who, in, who were part of the reconstruction of our state, who helped to build Columbia, but here were people whose roots are literally on the property of, of the Bull Street campus. Uh, and so again, this assignment um, that we've been given, uh, Councilman <coughs> McDowell, <laughs> has opened up things that I actually did not know. I, mean, I knew the Thompsons, I knew about Clarissa um, Allen, had no real acknowledgement that they were from the Bull Street community. Um, and Paige Ellington, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very glad that we've been given the task that he can deserve much greater attention. Um, so here we have a Citizens Park with the potential of acknowledging people like Paige Ellington and the Thompsons. Well, I tell you, Dr. Both uh, Robin and uh, Dr. Donaldson, I tell you, you all have made our job <laughs> a lot easier in terms of uh, his, in the historical context, um, sort of looking at, I sort of wrote down these names and put a check mark by some of the persons that uh, that sort of hit me, sort of impacted me in terms of a historical context. And one of those persons, of course, was Paige Ellington. Um, I'd like to hear what my other, the other members of this committee thanks because i've got uh, a direction i think i'd like for us to uh ensue uh howard yes sir uh, mr chairman um uh i i too have two things i'd like to mention uh one of them is the um communication i had from greg pierce who's chairman of the state mental health commission uh, and they're going into their 200th year celebration and uh, he he is recommending Paige Ellington and, and sent me a paragraph that um, came out of the book called Asylum Doctor that I have read since then. And um, I think that certainly Paige Ellington is a worthy person and maybe we can do a combination of Paige Ellington Citizens Park or something like that. But, because I think all of these others do need to be uh, recognized in some way and in shape and form. And the other thing is I'd like just to get into the record. Uh, I had another email from a constituent that says uh, she proposes that we name the park New Hope Park uh, because of the opening up of the creek and it, it's, its flowing waters demonstrate a moving on to better things and happier times. And then uh, honor the different families and people uh, with a trail uh, similar to the one we have on Main Street in Columbia. Uh, and Robin, I'd, I'd, I'd like to ask you a question is, is, what's the procedure? Does Richland County have some m markers that are different than the state markers that, that go up around? We've got Matilda Evans already named on a street and there was another one, I can't remember the name, but there was another one on the list here that has already been named on a street. And we need to certainly get recognition either through a Richland County historical marker or a state historical marker. And I didn't know if they, if, if there were two categories of marks that way. No, there's a, there's a state historic marker program and the, and the county certainly um, supports that with some of their projects. I think what, what we are, but we would be looking at our, our wayside signs that are mm -hmm. that are designed by a professional team that, that's not necessarily falling under that state historic mm -hmm. marker program. But but markers certainly, you know, you know, as, as Dr. Donaldson and I have, have talked about creating this this list, um, you know, there are lots of opportunities on that site to name a building or a street or to, to recognize a, um, an event or, or an individual. And so you know, it doesn't have to just be limited, I think, to the park would be our hope is that there are opportunities certainly to tell this story there, but also to spread this, this content throughout the, the, the campus itself. <clears throat> well, thank you, right, Robin. One of the things that we talked about earlier, and of course had a conversation with uh, with the Hughes folk, Hughes folk, uh, was that um, an opportunity to sort of 
spread this out throughout the campus. And uh, because we recognize that there are other, even when, even when we get to the point of recognizing that person, the name of that person, um, there were opportunities in a conversation with Robert, of course, to metastasize this throughout the uh, park with the naming of several individuals. So um, I think we're on target with that. Sam? <clears throat> Sam, turn your mic on. Got it. Well, everybody, you know, I'm a, I'm a craftsman myself, but I'm intrigued with um, uh, Mr. Thompson, not, not only living there, but actually helping to build that environment, you know, pouring foundations and so forth. And the fact that his house still yeah. exists not too far you know, that, from where Mr. he Ellen. is. That's Ellen. I'm sorry. Page. That's Ellen. That Page. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and what are we doing at Bull Street? We're bringing in more folks. It's, it's uh, a combination of residential living. And uh, I think there's a, there's a connection there with me. I, I would be um, in, influenced to uh, go with that name of, in the park. Well, that's my sort of, that's my sort of, uh, that's what I've been thinking about as I heard about and read about Paige Ellington. And of course, I've never ridden by to see that, that house. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's intriguing to have a house that is still standing. Um, and of course, the skills that Mr. Ellington had as it related to the time as related to to him uh and i heard see sam has something and i think i i agree with him and he, that statement is sam is also a craftsman and of course he works with his hands in terms of crafting iron and steel and whatever else and some of those things are still there now i know some of his work is relatively uh, uh early but I know that there's a gentleman in Charleston who taught him that skill and it's still there. And uh, so I'm sort of leaning towards Paige Ellington. And I'm also intrigued with uh, uh, Clarissa Allen. Uh, that in itself represents, I never ever knew that she was in a Randolph Cemetery. I didn't know that. But every time I enter onto I-126, the memory now is is sort of clear to me. So um, I think I think we're in a good posture. Who do we <laughs> do we want do we want to further vet these names or do we want to do we want to make a decision today? I I would suggest that I, I think all three of us are leaning towards Paige Ellington and. Um, uh, Robin, isn't Parker building one of his buildings? According to um, Greg Pierce, he built the Parker building, which is up and running. I'm still there. And probably had something to do with the other buildings, like Soco and uh, Todd Avance's uh, restoration of the laundry and all. He probably built those. Yeah, I mean, I, I think one of the one of the challenges with Ellington is the what um, level of, of documentation that we have of his engagement, which is which is not a lot. Um, so mm -hmm. it's, there's a lot of anecdotal information. Um, and, and those stories tend to also come from um, people like Babcock or, or Wearing, who's a general contractor, who are, who are white citizens who worked with, with Ellington. So I think we, we need to, um, when, we're, when we're crediting buildings, be sure that we can back that up with, mm -hmm. with kind of um, information that, that yeah. it. Yeah. So Robin, what you, I think I heard you say there is not enough documented evidence for Paige Ellington or what? I, I think a lot of it is, is anecdotal, but I mean, I think we can continue to, to look through materials and see what we can, we can uncover um, about Ellington and, and Bobby may have better 
Um, yeah. and, 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 I think I think there is a question mark about what he built at Bull Street and what's still standing. Um, clearly, he had an impact and is credited with being very integral. But beyond that, just take note as well. I mean, Paige Ellington was a city leader in Columbia beyond being a craftsman. He, he was very active in public affairs in the city uh, during Reconstruction. He was associated with multiple churches in the city. If you go in the front doors of the last Presbyterian Church right now, when you go on the, in the, on the right side door, you go in, there is a marble placard on the wall that talks about Paige Ellington, who led the Sunday school program in that church. Um, so in many different ways, he has, there's, there is a record of his contributions. Um, and we would, like Robin indicated, in terms of where his imprint is on Bull Street, uh, that will require some, some much more investigation. You know, I, uh, it's Tim. Tim. Um, it's, uh, what, where I'm uh, coming from is that um, you know, there's a broad uh, picture that we're trying, that we're, we're, we're painting and it's, it's uh, almost automatic. And that is people visiting this city will want to know about that location, that square. And not all, more, all of them will know that that was in fact one time an asylum. Uh, I remember uh, in my neighborhood in Charleston um, observing the authorities come to pick up a lady, as we used to say, to take her to Bull Street. I never knew what Bull Street was, where it was. We always heard about it. That's where they took her. And now I can imagine almost what her life was once she got there. She never came back home. So they kept her. Um, so as a mystique, I think to visitors, it will be when they really come to Columbia and they uh, partake in the amenities that that property, as huge as it is, has to offer, number one. Um, and uh, number two, there's a mixture there with all of the folks that uh, Dr. Dollison and and, uh, and and Robin has mentioned. I've worked with a lot of them, you know, over the years. Majeska, uh, the Buddha. Buddha was uh, Reverend Whitaker. We referred to him as the Buddha. He's where everybody went for political uh, <laughs> endorsement and and, uh, and that sort of thing. And they all played a role in this city. And I, I came here. And, 60, I came to Columbia in 1967. So I've been here a while, in and out of uh, relationships with those people. And um, Robin, you know, our experience on Gervais Street is one of those things that's still in my, in my belly, where we placed a monument one day and a couple of days later, the building was gone. Church tore down. Well, I won't say who, but but that that was a big disappointment. So it's an it's it's an example of how how we can just all of a sudden wipe memories away, and and people who come behind us have no idea of what went on before they got there. You know, um, Washington and uh, Assembly Street. You remember we tried, we thought we could save that building. That that one's gone. Thank God for what we're doing with Bulls, the, the Bull Street mural, the, the Wall Street mural. But uh so I I'm just saying that this guy, from from what we're hearing now, and um uh he invested in that acreage. He lived there, but he invested in it, and uh, I don't. I wouldn't have a problem in paying homage to him down the road if if all pans out in terms of what we need to know for justification. You know. All right, all right. Let me ask this question, which I think is um, sort of pushes us along a little bit. If we had to identify three to four persons 
after hearing what you've heard today. And of course, uh, that's engendered in your own experiences on Bull Street. What are those names that you would lift up? How? Well, uh, I I think the, the Thompson family um, certainly would be my number two pick is because that's that's multiple people and it's got a great story. It's got the Wallace, um, ex Wallace plantation there. So it could be, it could be a whole nother park, uh, a whole nother scheme down at that end of, mm -hmm. of, of the park. Uh, Paige, Paige Ellington is, is my favorite. Uh, there's so many others on here. Um, I'd hate to pick number three without having time to study it a little bit further because they, they get pretty close, pretty close after you get past Paige Ellington and the Thompson family that, that have multiple people in that one family. Uh, the Bell family uh, certainly has a compelling thing. Dr. Donaldson, I see that the, the letter that was written to you was in 2014. So that, mm -hmm. that predates our discussion by a yeah. lot. So they, they have been working. So I think they certainly uh, need to be on the marker trail or however we put signage mm -hmm. out to commemorate these people. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would suggest that we put to the council the name of Paige Ellington for the part, but also put to Dr. Donaldson and, and Robin uh, the task of designing a, a commemorative, the first part of a commemorative trail that would be mm -hmm. encompassing of other areas of Bull Street and the park uh, for, for other, other markers, either state markers or Wayfair markers like we have on, uh, on Main Street and leave that open-ended because as Dr. Donaldson said, um, we have turned up 15 names, uh, some of them we didn't know about before. Uh, mm -hmm. And as this becomes a, a built out community in the Bull Street District down there, I think we're gonna probably have other families say, well, you've got the Thompson family down here that came off the Wallace presentation and the XYZ family also did and this is what they did so I, I think we have to be open-ended on this that this this is not a finished product when we get hmm. the part name for page ellington that's just the beginning of the commemorations that we need to to make for all these other people that also have had a tremendous influence on this development mm -hmm. i agree i agree with that makes sense so, Mr. Chairman, I, right. I'd make a motion. Well, you know, I'd make a motion then that. that well, let, before before you make a motion, let me just let me throw out let me throw out some, because on my list, of course, Paige Ellington is the person that stands. Not that's number one. Of course, when I look at Car Clarissa Thompson Allen, that in itself represents a real. I mean that that's that's a strong historical point uh and of course i read a little something about dr john bull and of course those names could very well be metastasized throughout the the district the bull street district uh i also thought very and i knew reverend cj whitaker uh whitaker was one of those guys big guy Mm -hmm. who did all of mm -hmm. his politics sitting down in a chair. And of course, uh, when I was a young preacher there uh, here in Columbia, and I met Reverend C.J. Whitaker, um, you had to come, you had to kiss his ring. No question <laughs> about it. That's right. You had to, you had to kiss his <laughs> ring. And uh, he didn't say much, but look, it, he was like E.F. Hutton when he spoke. Everybody sort of shut up, and uh, they wanted they wanted to hear what uh, Reverend Whitaker uh, would say. So I think we've got we've got a identified Paige Ellington. I think Robin raises 
uh, uh, a real point. And I think Dr. Donaldson raises a point in terms of the information that we have on Paige Ellington. And I cause, cause I think the question probably will be asked about Paige Ellington. The, we've heard about him, uh, we've read about him. Uh, do we authentically put that in a historical context where we can say Paige, Paige Ellington is our, our choice? Because there, like you said, there are 15 other names out there that we could very well metastasize throughout this park with uh, street namings and that sort of thing. So well, the direction I think would, I'm sorry, go ahead, Howard. I was just gonna ask Dr. Donaldson, uh, there are footnotes in the book called The Asylum Doctor that, that, that reference the uh, Carolina, Carolinian Library box that some of this information is in have we have we gone and dusted off that box to see what's in it uh, i have not so those those are the babcock papers and so i think you're right to delve more deeply to really just confirm the spaces he built on that property i think those records may underscore that right. well other thing i'll just say too is i'm excited about all these these possibilities um and as again as i said i was very intrigued by by paige ellington who was a real mystery to me the thompson family as well and also this idea of a citizen's park. I mean, one of the things that I think was uh, Councilman Davis mentioned, he mentioned um, the, the dedication, because I was there, of a historic marker honoring George Elmore. Yeah. Uh, and, and, I, and I was there the next day when there was in, it was a, a pile of stones. Um, <laughs> and one of the things that I think Robin mentioned, I think we want to keep in right. mind, is this initiative, I think, has sparked a lot of conversation and a lot of research and it will continue to unfold. So mm -hmm. we know George Elmore, George Elmore who challenged racial segregation in politics in mm -hmm. 1946. But many people may not know Laura, El Laura Elmore. Who is she? She's his wife. Mm -hmm. Who is she? She's his wife who was ultimately committed to the state hospital mm -hmm. after having a nervous breakdown. And she lived mm -hmm. out the rest of her life in state hospital facilities. Mm -hmm. um, she too is buried at the Randolph Cemetery. Randolph. Um, so again, I think as these stories unfold, we will be able to use that footprint to recognize multiple people, including Laura Elmore, who's never been given the attention she deserves. I, I think it's got to be open-ended as, as yeah. we move down this trail that we're going to have a lot of people. Whose names come up. But Dr. Donson, you raised a very important point referencing the Elmores. Uh, some years ago, I was in attendance when we uh, erected the uh, historical marker uh, right there, right there by the church. And of course, the historical marker was placed uh, there on Gervais. And the next day, uh, to my surprise, it was gone. And uh, I don't want to get into the torrid details in terms of <laughs> why it was torn down but of course my wife she was there those bricks that uh that was in the rubble uh we collected those bricks and uh i've got a number of bricks uh in at, on my property here on height street uh where that's where that store was torn down i think it's those kinds of efforts dr donaldson uh, Mr. Elmore and his wife Laura, somewhere in that process, there are there are other folk, unnamed heroes and sheroes that uh, we could perhaps incorporate into the larger picture as it relates to the Bull Street property. And, and, and I'll say too, one of the things that to keep in mind, and this is why the work of Historic Columbia is so invaluable, is right. um, what occurred at the Elmore store was enabled by the city of Columbia. The church does not get, I mean, just knock down a building. There was a permit secured. There was an Absolutely. office in the city who agreed in the demolition of that building, not knowing, I, I believe, of the historic right. significance. Councilman Davis mentioned the other building at the intersection of uh, Assembly in Washington, mm -hmm. a building that once was the office of um, some of the leading lawyers in Columbia, African-American lawyers. Well, that building was torn down, enabled by a city permit, 
that destroyed a vital anchor. Mm -hmm. And so my hope is that Bull Street does not become a place that we, we honor sites and places that should have been recognized long ago. But at least we have the flexibility to now go back and think about some of those vanishing moments, vanishing people, and find ways at Bull Street or elsewhere to, be, to pay due attention to those individuals. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I think if I understand what we've done here today, we've at least um, narrowed the path in terms of naming that naming the park, but also included in that are names of unsung heroes and sheroes, um, which, are, which of course would lead us um, perhaps in a position to say, not the vetting, but of course, I've sort of prioritized my list and I think each one of our members have done that. But I think we probably need to look a little deeper into it before we make that recommendation to council. You don't think that we have enough uh, support for naming the park, the Page Ellington Park, and then direct the, um, ask the staff and Historic Columbia and Dr. Donaldson to, to further Continue. Uh, look at other names and other, uh, other buildings that he might be credited with or other people that we don't know now. Yeah, if we but approach it. Take, take that we, first stop because Henry wants to get this thing dedicated before it gets too hot out there for us to, to have a ceremony. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? We know about <laughs> being hot and cutting ribbons. We know about what that is. I know, they always <laughs> wait to July 4th right. to cut a ribbon. And um, yeah, I mean, if that's the direction we need to take, I'm in agreement with that. Uh, well, I make the motion that we propose the name of Paige Ellington uh, to the rest of the city council to get their approval for the name part, but to uh, in, insist that this is not a final step. This is just the first step in commemorating others that have had a significant uh, part in the development of the uh, Bull Street District. Um, and maybe that uh, uh, Henry and Dr. Donaldson and Robin can come back with a plan for other um, wayfair oh, signs that would honor other people also. All right, that's a that's a long motion, Howard. <laughs> Erica got down every word of it. I got it. I second. I it. Yeah. All right. It's been moved and seconded that we present the name of Paige Ellington uh, and we present that name to council and that we would certainly appre uh, to, to be appreciated if uh, Robin and Dr. Donaldson would do the other part of expanding that into the entire park, the other names, metastasizing those names into other parts of the park. All right, you've heard the motion. If you would so indicate, let it be known by saying aye. 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 All right, aye. It's unanimous that we proceed in such manner. Dr. Donaldson, Robin, uh, can we call on you all? I mean, look, we understand the check is in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> we understand the check is in the mail. If you all would help us as we move forward in terms of spreading that, uh, giving, giving us some idea of uh, other names that we can use in the park to identify those particular persons. Can we ask you all to do that for us? Yeah, I just for, for clarification, when we're talking about doing something that is a broader story about the African-American experience on that campus and beyond, we talking about that within the park as a as a sort of trail within that space? Or are we talking about kind of coming up with names that would be across the campus as a whole? I just want to be sure that um, what you're clear about what you're asking us to. I think Sam. My thinking is um, 
a trail up throughout the park. There are different locations that I think yes. you can. Um, I, I think that if we go beyond the park, we certainly need to coordinate with the huge development. Yeah, we that's wanna, fine. We don't want to put a, a marker up and then all of a sudden it's got to be moved for a $100 million investment. Yeah, no, I, I, no, I, no. I just wanted to clarify that we were in a contained space as opposed to merging yeah. down that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, my, I guess it's it's kind of like when you walk through the through the city. Uh, there are there are locations that has a path and a history, and uh, you can, it could be a twenty million dollar building. But the question is, I think one of the, one of the reasons Bull Street is being showcased is because of what it was and how long it was almost or considered nothing right. for people who had no attachments to it, you know, the families and that sort of thing. But but it it I I think it's I would think it would be very unique and a, and a proud badge for the city if there is a eighty million dollar building at a particular location, and then there's a little tag about what it, of, of that location prior to. That's all we're saying, I, right. I'm think, you know, not every spot on the, on the campus, um, I think it's trying, it will tell the story that we're trying to tell, but there are certain locations. You know, I've heard there's, there's supposedly something unique about the, uh, the morgue on that property. It was so self-contained, they had their own morgue. Yeah. You know, that, that's, that's what you call containment. Mm -hmm. I just threw that out as an example. I don't know if they'll ever recognize that building as a form of morgue, but that's, that's something to know <laughs> about. Maybe it'll be in the history books. So Robin, I think, I think your, uh, your statement sort of, sort of helps us because we're not only looking at naming the park, but also it's sort of similar to what, when we visit the state house and we take that tour from the state house down main street, it's sort of similar to some of those, some of those plaques that are there on the curb, on the sidewalk. Um, and I sort of envisioned that taking place um, in Bull Street, at Bull Street. Um, it sort of gives us a real pathway um to where we where we headed of course the mural there at 1401 main street sort of helps us continue that journey to 1401 so so it's sort of similar to what we want to do on main street and what we want to do on bull street does that does that help a little bit yeah i, I think what what might be helpful and and maybe this is something that that dr donaldson and, and henry and i can talk about is if the name if the name of the park is the Page Ellington Park, then maybe there's a secondary tagline that is something that's related to exploring the African American experience on the campus or as part of the department. Just just so that people understand that while the park is named this, that the the goal is also to explore a, a much broader story mm -hmm. within that yes. park. Yes. Yeah. yes. If, if I could, Mr. Chair, can I add something to that? Yes, sir. So I, I, I would agree with, um, with with Robin, and I would just say that our focus could be um, based on what we're recommending with Paige Ellison, naming that, naming the park that, but also um, focusing on the wayside sign, signage within the park. And then as a second phase, begin to explore other opportunities on the campus with the appropriate research. We want to make sure we take the time in the second phase to identify other opportunities, but give us give ourselves some time to really research that in mm -hmm. partnership with what we talked about with the huge development corporation. But I think mm -hmm. for for um, structure sake and for time sake with Dr. Donaldson and Robin supporting this, let's focus right now on the of course the naming of the park and then the wayside signs within the park. And then as a second phase, get into maybe doing some research and then identifying other locations as we identify that research going forward. 
You've got two. Point. You've got two of them out there already, Henry, with uh, Matilda Evans, and I think it's Dr. Uh, Alonzo McClanigan, the McClanigan Street. Is that, is that the street? The other street that's already been named out there by the Hughes Group. I think uh, one of them. That, I know Matilda Evans is one. She's yep. got a street sign up there, and we yeah. need to put a Wayfair sign down there somewhere that says who she is and why she's important. Right. But when, they, when we get off the 19 or 20 acre park, we need to make sure we coordinate with the Hughes Corporation about where these markers are. Right. And, and of course, Dr. Donaldson, I know you're sitting there thinking that we're giving you more work, you and Robin, but on the Parks and Rec Recreation team will um, do a lot of their legwork to help you all. We just really need your engagement in terms of the information. You all the, are the subject matter experts. So we want to lean on you all just to provide the information and then we can work through um, everything else. Yeah, sure, I, um, I I need to leave. Um, last week was spring break here in in our Richmond one, and our two children adopted a puppy. <laughs> They're back in school, and the puppy's home with me. And I'm trying to navigate the puppy who's jumping on my leg, trying to talk to city council. So, however I can be helpful, just let me know. Thank you, brother. Yes, All right, thank you. Wait, I thank you, thank you, Doc. Thank you, Doctor Donaldson. Um, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Howard. Uh, Mr. Chairman, before we adjourn, we have one more piece of business. We need to uh, approve the naming of the Marvin Heller Community Garden uh, on Gervais Street that will, will take place on May 1st. So you're the sponsor of this uh, this uh, naming, but I, I would like to get it voted on by the committee. Yes. All right. Um, may, I, may I interject on that one? Um, the matter has not been properly referred to the committee. Um, it's scheduled yeah, to be sure. on the April. It's scheduled to be on the April twentieth agenda for city council approval. Okay. You so mean we can't Eric take Lee. up a we can't take up a, a naming and recommend it to the council. I prefer that you not, since it wasn't referred to the committee. Um, for it to come out of the committee would kind of be putting the cart before the horse, respectfully. So we, we, Hey, look, Erica, we've done, we've done that before. <laughs> Most of them don't even go to the committee. <laughs> right, they don't. So, um, I mean, it, you can you can make the motion. I just thought of course, it. Or, or, would it, or would it be proper that the, the committee recommends to council? The oh. item has already been prepared for council's agenda oh, okay. on Tuesday. Okay. And so there will be a council vote um, okay. on Tuesday. All right. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, see it, I see it on the That's agenda. Fine. Eric, I see it on the agenda and I certainly appreciate you raising that. But I'm also I'm also cognitive of the fact that sometimes we do things sitting in our chairs in chamber. <laughs> so <laughs> what, so what? um so I appreciate uh I appreciate you keeping us on task. Uh I see the agenda and it's there on the agenda and uh we're okay. very appreciative that you kept us to Taz. Yes, Thank you. We, uh, we did, we did validate the uh, your uh, your motion, right, Howard? Beg your pardon. What say that again, Sam? Did we validate the motion? Uh, Erica jumped in before we could Early. we could vote, but uh, earlier the, the sentiment of the three yeah. members of the committee is to support this on April the twentieth. Okay, That's I'll good. be more than glad to let the record reflect, reflect that there was a consensus of the committee. Okay, to good. Endorse but, the renaming. Yes, but sir. Eric, I think I think Sam is talking about the motion we made to uh, right. Uh, uh, that, to yeah, identify. we made that motion. We made that motion, right, and you, it was you got that mo you got that motion right, Eric. I, I do, and part of my reason for speaking up is because I would, before you all adjourn, like to take just a brief moment to go over what I have and allow you all to make any uh -huh. adjustments since there was a bit of um, going back and forth. And all so right. the motion is to propose naming the Bull Street Park after Mr. Paige Ellington as the first step in commemorating others who had a significant role in developing the Bull Street Park. Uh -huh. Uh, Assistant City Manager Simons, Dr. Donaldson, and Robin Waits were asked to come back with plans for a commemorative walking trail with wayside signage and other parts of the park exploring the African American experience. That's good. Uh, you couldn't have said it any better, Eric. I don't know how you typed that that quick, but they a lot shorter than me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, we'll work with the, this some more, but I just wanted to make sure that I captured yeah. the essence of your motion. Right, you well, got it. You, you, you okay. captured it very well and put quotation marks around it. So thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. You're welcome. Very good, Erica. Good job. Allowing Erica, the floor. Thank you. Erica, anything else? That's it from me, sir. Mr. Simons, did you have anything else? Uh, no, I do not. Thank you. Thank you so much, Erica. And may we adjourn. Ms. Thank Wilson you. sends her regrets. She had a scheduling conflict and she sends her regrets. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Right. Look, I thank you guys. Thank you all very much, Henry. Yes, sir. You all, you, you've done a you've done a magnanimous job thank in you. leading us through this, and we are very appreciative for your help and your assistance. Yes, Howard sir. and Sam, of course, thank you all for being due diligent and being right <laughs> on point. I think we've uh, we've accomplished a lot as we've talked about the Bull Street renaming. Um, I think it's it's going to go a long way. So I appreciate yeah, you, Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. All. Right. you all have a good day.